Hi, this is Amy from Good Food on Earth, and I am joined with four wonderful women today uh, here in Canada who have decided to come together to start the Freedom Organization. And we're going to talk about what that is and what's going to be involved. Um, but first, I'd like to introduce everyone. We've got Amanda Forbes, Tanya the Herbalist. We have uh, Danielle Pistilli and Alicia Johnson. So I'd like to go around um, first and ask each of you if you could give yourself a bit of an introduction, your background, and why you decided to take a stand and take action. Okay, so I myself, Tanya the Herbalist, I don't tend to give my maiden name yet, um, but uh, I really got introduced into this type of world when it came to seeing the, my mom nearly succumb to the pharma industry. Um, and, and seeing that happen, almost saying my goodbyes to her, I realized that I had to look into alternative measures, which is how I found plant medicine, and then kind of got introduced to the bullying that really happens into the, you know, a family doctor's office when it came to, you know, vaccines and my son, which naturally transitioned me to when COVID happened, I was able to see everything from the corruption behind the doctors, as well as the pharma industry to understand that there was a lot of hands involved there. And then through this journey, I was introduced to these beautiful women um, and Amanda and I have worked closely together and she introduced me to Danielle and Alicia, which I'm forever thankful for because I really do feel like this powerhouse is creating, you know, the freedom organization that is, is just really on its way to something that hopefully can absolutely make a difference for us here. Yeah, amazing. So whoever wants to go next, feel free to jump. Maybe we'll go Amanda and then Danielle and then Alicia. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, my name is Amanda Forbes. Uh, a lot of you know me from Baxed Canada, as well as um, Children's Health Defense Canada here that is just getting up on its two feet and running. So uh, two, two causes that are so close to my heart. You know, I love I love sharing everything about them. Um, I started this journey with a vaccine injury that occurred um, in my youngest daughter's first few months, if you will. Um, we, we watched it happen once and then we watched it happen twice. And by the second time, you know, there, what's that saying? Fool me once. <laughs> so um, needless to say, as terrified as I was to stop everything that I was supposed to be doing or that people in the world should be doing without a doubt. Um, we had to do that in order to make sure she had a future. And that's basically where the advocacy started for health freedom. Um, I'm a person that, you know, believes deeply that a parent has the right to choose what is right for their family and can choose one or can change their mind along the way. It's not one size fits all for anybody. And uh, basically we all kind of came together in an organic way down the line and uh, wouldn't trade it for the world. I wouldn't trade any of it for the world because what we're doing right now is so organic and it is so important. Um, it, it just grows every day. And, and you can feel the love coming in from the messages. You can you feel the connection that the people with the fear have and you know this is their way of taking action mm -hmm. and it, it means the world to me and I know it means the world to these ladies because if we can draw out the accurate amount of people that are affected negatively that want to say something but can't you know we've solved a big problem there mm -hmm. and we can make a change with that so change is good <laughs> And uh, I'm Danielle Pastilli, and uh, my, I guess you could say my awakening, um, I've been working for an industry that is mind-body connection, uh, working for holistic wellness and really understanding the connection between mind and body. And when somebody's got, uh, Tanya and I were having a conversation before the, before the call today, if somebody's got pain and inflammation in their knees, and I can see this on biofeedback, uh, we can have a really good understanding is, Physically, I can see on a screen what somebody's connection is, and I can see that there's inflammation, that there's pain there, but what does that mean on a mental, uh, emotional level? 
And so somebody, for instance, if they've got pain in their knees, this would relate to somebody being stuck in life. You know, their foundation is not stable. And so I've, I've learned a lot about the mind-body connection for years. And uh, through that, um, the foods that we eat, the gemstones we wear, the sounds that we listen to, the words that we say are all frequencies. So the alchemy of life and everything that we put in, on, and around our bodies affects who we are. Fast forward a few years, I watched The Truth About Cancer with Ty and Charlene Bullinger, and that woke me up to another level of the corruption in the medical industry. And it was the first episode with uh, Robert Scott Bell that talked about the Rockefellers. Was it Rockefellers or Rothschilds that were in both Rockefellers? I, w- I know both? the Rockefellers. Yeah, the, the Rockefellers <laughs> right. were definitely heavily involved the- in the creation of uh, allopathic medicine. Yeah. yeah, and so the money that they were giving to the teaching schools Uh, was all contingent on whether or not they taught the pharmaceutical way. And so out went the way of learning about food and herbs and holistic medicine and in, you know, enter in the whole pharmaceutical industry. And it just became a big money grab. So that was kind of the first thing for me that I was like, holy smokes, like this is massive. Like there's a lot of, like, we're not really being taught the full picture. You know, we can, we can do integrative medicine even, but we are, there's a huge element that's being left out for us. So I actually bought that series a year before my mom was diagnosed with cancer. And like Tanya's story, I, you know, I've, I've watched my mom struggle and uh, really understanding, you know, again, the foods we eat, the herbs we eat, it all makes a difference. Fast forward again to COVID releasing, I could see through it. The very first time I, I very first moment I heard about it, I said, mark my words, this is but a vaccine mark my words. And sure enough, we've got the whole pharmaceutical industry. We know that there, that this is a manufactured virus. Uh, otherwise it wouldn't be patent, right? You can't patent anything in nature. So, you know, there's there, I could see through all of these things that are going on. And of course, the more you scream about it, and the more you're trying to tell people that they're being duped, the more of a crazy conspiracy, conspiracy theorist that you come across. And, uh, you know, the, the discrediting that, that people give, but I know that every woman, on, every woman on this panel does their research extensively and feel very, very blessed that uh, was one of the coordinators with the Freedom Rally movement here in Vancouver, which is where I met Alicia. We met at our first Mother's Day March in, uh, uh, our first March in Mother's Day. So our anniversary is coming up soon. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and after that, uh, through the rallies, I was connected through to Amanda because she was working similarly over in Ontario and that just became this beautiful soul sister match and uh, I've been a little intimidated to get my feet out there and and get on get online and and do these live videos and stuff and Amanda's been kind of like come on I'm gonna pull you along here (laughs) the same way that Alicia was with with the rally she's like come on you can do this I got you go 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 we're gonna follow you and so I've had these amazing women just pulling me up and then to have Tanya bring us in on this initiative that's kind of how we all came together. And, and I've kind of gone on reluctantly and nervously and, and I've got these beautiful women just lifting me up into this. And I do feel very, very called to, to do what I'm doing. And uh, as much as I'm, I have a discomfort level around it, being a leader means many of us are called, but it's really important to stand into that and to, to do what you're being called to do. And, and I can't stand by as much as these relationships are being some close relationships are being discontinued. Many other beautiful relationships are coming from that. And I am doing this to hopefully salvage some of those relationships that um, that have gone by the wayside, hopefully only temporarily until the truth comes out. So I'm screaming from the rooftops. I just want, I, I want us all to live in harmony, right? Kumbaya, the new friends and the old friends. I just want to wake everybody up. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, I think that's all our goal here is that you know, as much as people are dismissing us as conspiracy theorists, you know, we, we don't want to dismiss them. And we know that there are ways we can reconnect at a human level. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to your conference and talking about that. Uh, Alicia, the floor is yours. <laughs> so I'm Alicia Johnson, and uh, my journey is a little different from these three beautiful ladies. Um, Uh, I have grown up uh, with a lot of adversity in my life, which showed me a lot of various dynamics in how people can be taken advantage of. 
I have a mother who is a long-term care nurse of 25 years. And so I grew up in a household understanding the multifaceted political um, environment that our elderly unfortunately succumb to in these long-term care homes. So for me, um, I guess it is different things I've done in my life career-wise that allowed me to see through this as soon as it started to transpire. Um, I used to work in the private surgical sector. So I've worked with some of the best surgeons, the best nurses, the best anesthesiologists, and I've learned a lot. Um, so, and currently now I am in the wholesale industry. And so I directly deal with manufacturing in, in Asia, in China. So when all of this started to happen and we were being shut down, I already knew that China was back up and running and manufacturing again. Yeah. And if this was a true pandemic, that is impossible especially for a populace of that size in China. Um, and then we had, you know, the masks being introduced and I'm trained on them. I know they don't work. Um, you know, unless you're going to walk around in a hazmat suit, you're never going to be protected from a virus. And so I could see all these mechanisms being espoused by the government and I knew it was blatant fraud. And so I started speaking out um, right away. And it's, it's one of those things where I've always stood up despite all things for what is right. And I've done it at the cost um, of family and friends, even growing up. You know, I, I think anybody who went to elementary school with me remembered the girl who took on the entire classroom when they were doing something wrong to a student and I wouldn't stand for it. And that's how I've always lived my life. Um, and this is what these three beautiful ladies are doing. We have all taken a lot of hits. Uh, we've been criticized, we've been chastised, um, but you know, the truth prevails. It will always prevail. And so, you know, we collectively came together and I, I truly believe in divine timing and divine intervention. And, and that's, what, that's what this is. And we are all about to give everybody um, a voice. Those who feel they cannot speak out, um, you know, those who are feeling like they're scared or they, they have fear, we're giving them that open door to have you know, inner, give them inner strength and give them confidence and give them affirmation to know, hey, what I was thinking or what I was feeling, you know what, I, I was right. And it's going to give them the strength and the courage to start standing up and, and having a voice of their own, just like we all are right now. Yeah, yeah. And so let's talk about this amazing freedom organization. Um, let's start with how that came about because I know you guys all came from this in different angles. Um, what made you decide to do this and what's the mission of this? So um, what started was uh, we've been all involved in really protests and rallies since I think early April or May. And what happened is a, a good friend of mine who's a lawyer here in Ottawa, that's where I'm located, we were having a discussion and kind of going back and forth and he was throwing it out like, uh, you know, these, these protests are useless, you know, you don't, unless you've got like thousands and thousands and thousands of people, you know, and there's so many people that are not counted for, um, it's kind of how the idea flourished. And so it really came and when I started to think about a virtual protest, what happened is uh, this lawyer friend of mine was like, well, you can, you can use analytics. Like if you took it virtually, you can use analytics, you could use the data and the snowball effect has happened. I'm like, oh my goodness, this could be, you know, not only data, but exactly like Amanda, Danielle and Alicia are all saying is we're giving people a voice. People that felt silenced feel like they matter now. People that, you know, didn't feel like their opinion mattered. Now it matters. We're able to run polls. We're able to take participants um, and, and collect all of this information and put it into 
a report that can essentially be submitted to the government at all levels to recognize that, you know, your polls, for example, that you're seeing, you know, on a headline of 74% of, you know, people believe in lockdowns, when all of us are like, that's not true, I never saw that poll, who, who, who received that poll, and there's like 1600 participants, well, now we're taking it on a bigger scale, almost creating our own meta analysis, and being able to submit that. So I obviously know that this is definitely not a job that can be done alone. Uh, and I'm forever thankful I reached out to Amanda. My gut told me that's the first thing to do. Amanda said, we need to bring in Danielle. Danielle said, we need to bring in Alicia. And it exactly collaborated the way it needed to. Um, and what I considered and we considered as the largest organized resistance in Canada it has never happened before. And the media can't deny this. Um, and, and that's essentially where it, where it started from. And then I don't know if, uh, you know, Amanda, you want to kind of continue from there because she, she really kind of took it a step further in terms of leveraging ways of doing that. And Well, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, geez, <laughs> where do we even start? There were so many ways to go and there were so many benefits and we had to weigh the benefits and the risks, obviously, because we don't want it to be called a protest mm -hmm. in that regard. So it's not, it's the Freedom for Truth conference. So in that regard, you're going to allow people to empower themselves by taking place. You're going to provide education for those that may be sitting on the fence. And we're not talking yeah. like... Um, like anybody that just wants to step up on the stage. We wanna bring in the heavy hitters with the science behind them where you're going to learn something to put your fear at ease. You know, uh, actual stats, the ones they won't show you, the ones that they're censoring, um, as well as being able to take action. Action's a big thing. And when you're living in fear and you, you can't take part in the physical anything on the streets of Toronto or Vancouver or whatever, because you're going to get fired. Your, your neighbors are going to call and snitch on you. You know, your, your business is going to be doxxed or even so, or you're scared you're going to get arrested in Toronto or ticketed or whatever. Um, as well as open the door up for people with disabilities that want to be there, but just can't physically get there. Do you know what I mean? We wanted it to be inclusive of everyone every background, every ethnicity, every, every language, every, you name it. We want to unify this country like it's never been unified before. And by damn, we're gonna do it. <laughs> if it's the last thing we do, I promise you, we're gonna do it. Yeah, I, I think that's, um, I wanna touch on that point of giving everybody a voice because I think that taking away of people's freedom of speech is, is so at, at the heart of this, you know, where, um, they don't feel like they can express their own opinion. And by providing this space, this conference, like they're just showing up, they're showing their presence. They might even be able to start networking with people they didn't even know existed that could be living really close to them. But, you know, they're, they're fed, all they're fed is the mainstream media messaging, which makes them feel like they're alone and that their voice doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 Danielle and uh, oh, go ahead, Amanda, if you want nope, to. No, that's okay. <laughs> no, nope, I'm good. <laughs> I was just going to add to that, Amanda. Didn't you say that uh, with the people that are signing up, we're already getting teachers and doctors and nurses, and these are all the people that have have been, you know, although we're not calling it a rally, it is that that resistance, that coming together of people and community. But there's been so many people that have been afraid to come out to these rallies because the fears of like what Amanda was saying, fear of being recognized. We know people that have lost their jobs. A very good friend of mine and Alicia's lost his job for, for his son was speaking at the rallies. And they said that if you're gonna show up there, we, we can't continue to have you on. So a little more of a, a story in between that, but, but long story short, he was he was threatened to lose his job uh another friend has lost his job like we we know three people that are just within the leaders uh, of the people that have been coming out and, and partaking in these rallies that have lost their jobs just for just for being involved for doing what their constitutional right is to be able to protest regardless of how you feel regardless of what your opinion is around the current lockdown situation somebody's opinion does not get to override another person's rights mm -hmm. and i think that that's what with uh, you know, what we call our normie friends need to come to the conclusion of is that, is that you can have your opinion, you can think lockdowns work, you can think masks don't, you, that they work. But at the end of the day, 
you do not get to trump my rights. Mm -hmm. And this is when, when we can all come to this understanding, then, you know, it's kind of like what, you know, when you have like a child and, and you have to give them the, um, the boundaries, right? And when you've got the boundaries, people are just, they're like, okay, I get it. I, I understand that I, that I don't have to have, I don't get a say on it. But when you allow that sort of gray area, which our government has been doing, you know, through the media, it's, you know, there's this wishy-washy period. So then everybody feels like they get to be able to be policing anybody in a store and that they have the right, you know, you're, you're risking my health. My son's being called nice. You want to get everybody sick at the school, you know? And so he's literally being harassed and people don't know when their rights are being violated and they don't know when they're violating another one's rights. My goal is to get into the school system is to learn the constitution, to learn the, you know, the rights and freedoms in school because again, nobody knows when they're violating, nobody knows when they're even being violated to say, well, prove it to me. We wanna see your exemption. It's crap. They don't get to ask that. And we realize <laughs> when we actually have those hard boundaries and we say, you don't get to ask, mm -hmm. period. You can have an opinion, but your opinion doesn't matter over what my rights are, period. And so I think we really need to have that hard conversation. And it's, it's hard. I like to be the person who gets along with everybody and likes to, you know, try and soften edges and stuff. But I'm, I'm getting sick and tired of it, of it at the end of the day because this has gone on long enough. There's enough information out there that you don't have to scratch very deep to get the information. But guess what? Now all of those speakers that we would have had at a rally can actually show up because they're not having to quarantine to get here. They're not having to take PCR tests to fly in town. We can have, we can have the education that we need. We don't have, one of our nurses at our last rallies pulled out because her work was going to make her PCR test and, mm -hmm. uh, and also um, quarantine if she was gonna speak at the rally. They were gonna allow her to do so, but she was gonna have to jump through all of these hoops to get there. Mm -hmm. Well, now she can speak her truth. She can come online. She can share what her reality of the situation is without having to worry about that because she's not actually around people. So this is allowing us to jump through all sorts of, you know, all of the, the roadblocks that people were having to be able to come to these rallies, to come together, to show the government what we want, to show the government what we won't stand up for. And so, and that was one of the things that the VPD here said in Vancouver is they said, you guys get a, you guys get a bum rap, as do they. Um, but at the end of the day, your protests show the government what you will and will not stand for. Mm -hmm. So now we can actually come together. We're using their technology against them for our, for our benefit so that we can actually have everybody come together. And if you don't want to be seen, you can put your video off mode, but your number counts for something when you show up at this conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, I, um, I always try and explain to people that, you know, yes, there's information that is at your fingertips, but we have kind of groomed society to, you know, essentially be, be lazy and just, you know, accept what we're being told. And, um, you know, a lot of times I don't think that is on purpose. It's just that, um, you know, there's, there's kind of a unspoken trust in the media. And, and to be honest with you, I, I was at that same person, you know, um, I was that same person until I realized and, and bore witness to everything that I saw happen last year, even now, I mean, as we run the, the rallies, we, we get slandered all the time and it's painted with a brush that is, we're, we're none of those defamatory things that they say, we, you know, we're not anti-mask, we're, you know, we're, we're freedom, we're pro-freedom, we're pro-education, we're pro-truth mm -hmm. and that's what we're sharing. So, you know, the media, the reason why they do this is because they know if people show up, they're going to learn. And knowledge is power. And when you have that knowledge, you're no longer fearful anymore. So, you know, this is the most beautiful thing to happen because I feel like we are, you know, broaching a way to educate people in a very passive way um, where they can take their power back because as soon as they have knowledge, their power is back, back in their own. And, you know, so... I always try my best, um, you know, when I, I speak to people, when I, yesterday, actually, I was, I was doing some work with some retailers, and, and when I 
you know, I do a lot of lives and I always try to explain to everybody. I know that it's very frustrating. It's very disheartening. You know, you go into, you want to go into a store and you see, you know, no entry without a mask. And this is actually something that is just atrocious that the government has done, but this is something to be expected. And people don't realize this unless you're someone like me who works in the retail industry and works with retailers. When they instituted these emergency measures, as they call them, uh, especially with the mask, they never sent out a package to retailers to let them know that here's the ministerial order, here are the exemptions, and that you know mask exemptions need to be respected and do not discriminate because there are consequences for discrimination. Mm -hmm. So as we have these retailers scrambling, they're going online and they're trying to figure out what do they do because they don't want to have their business shut down. Mm -hmm. They don't want to get fined. And that's because that's their livelihood. Just like for us, you know, we're protecting our own livelihood as best we can and our families as best we can. So yesterday I spent the afternoon going and handing to every retailer uh, one of the lawsuits that was filed here in BC. And I also handed them the ministerial order with the exemptions, the BC human rights um, PDF that was uh, basically issued publicly so that they knew that they can honor mask exemptions. Their business will not get shut down. They will not be fined. And that with this lawsuit, they can learn the truth, the truth that everybody deserves to know. Mm -hmm. And so with that, I, you know, I had many retailers thank me because I said to them, this is for you so you can protect yourself. And so when you put that up on your door, a bylaw officer or any officer or any institution, once they... that's where we're at right now. And that's what we need to do. And we're going to do it on a grand scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, what's interesting about that business is not under knowing I'm going to tell you a bit about what happened here in Newfoundland. Um, so our human rights commission is actually, you know, they're very well informed. Um, they told businesses that they cannot refuse service and they have to honor exemptions. Um, so they're not playing around with that. Well, the, our, I know our executive director there, she went on VOCM radio to notify people. And then they asked the chief medical officer to make an announcement to educate the public about this so that they were clear. She never did, never for months. So the, I finally heard the executive director from our human rights commission just a couple of days ago was able to get on our CBC morning show on the radio. And most of the people here in Newfoundland listened to that. And she, she told them, you cannot deny people access to your business for not wearing a mask. But we have somebody from our commission trying to get that message out there. And they, they uh, spoke to the chief medical officer to ask them to make it at their press conference that they're, you know, all the time telling people what to do and they wouldn't do it. So it's, it's really just fallen to us because, you know, some, I'm sure you guys might've all experienced it. There's some stores who think that it's all right to say, you can't come in and don't ever come back here. And, you know, basically discriminate against you and they don't understand that they can actually be held liable for doing something like that. Yeah. 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 And I think this is why this is so important because each one of these ladies touched point on it, but not only are we giving a platform for people to have a, a voice such as doctors, nurses, teachers that are scared to show up, but it's about the education that's going to come with it. Like Alicia was saying, knowledge is power. And even more so, you know, knowledge with is not only power, but with action comes the power. And now when you kind of tap into this, you know, the Freedom Organization, uh, Freedom for Truth Conference, you're hearing this knowledge. You've got someone like Rocco Galati, who's a constitutional lawyer, who's able to educate them to let them know their rights. Because when you know your rights, you're not scared, you're going in confident. I was refused service at Costco, uh, at chapters, um, I, I boycotted Costco a long time ago, but I went into chapters and I was refused service and I was swarmed in and I'm five, five, 130 pounds. I'm not a very big person. So to have like, you know, three people come in at me, um, 
it was a little bit intimidating, but at the same time, I was like, focus on your rights. You know, I stood firm and I told them, I know my rights. You cannot refuse me mass, um, uh, like service. You have a business license. It's not private property. I'm going to continue to shop now. And by the end of it, the first guy who I threatened to charge him with harassment because he kept following me around the store, um, ended up saying, is there something that I can help you find? Mm -hmm. You know, so they, they're aware of that. And when you're kind of knowledgeable and you, you go there with that knowledge and kind of confront them, they're not expecting that because most people are either just going to comply and say, okay, fine, I'll put on the mask. I took my chances. Um, and this is what it's for when you've got lawyers and people speaking out and doctors and sharing those facts, this freedom organization is giving people now a chance to even someone that's one foot in one foot out someone that, you know, doesn't, you know, they comply, but they don't really know the rights. So they just don't want to fight it. And they're against some of the rules. This is giving them a chance now to go into that because these are the people that aren't showing up to these rallies mm -hmm. and to actually hear it. And the biggest thing is, is this is creating the largest power of herd movement because now you're seeing thousands and thousands of people, professionals and experts and, you know, people in the industry coming together and seeing this. And when you start to recognize, and this is why the media will say there was a, a few hundred at the protest when there could be thousands because they don't want people to start shifting with the power of the herd because it only takes 5% to shift the other 95% to start shifting to that movement. And this is gonna be a way for them to recognize you know, that there's thousands of people and it's only gonna grow. And if we keep running these rallies every two to three weeks and keep collecting that data and people are aware of that, now they realize that there's a whole tribe of like-minded people behind them that actually feel the same. And that alone is empowering. And that's really the, the goal of all of this. And if a teacher goes in and sees a bunch of other teachers, you know, chatting and things like that, saying that I'm a teacher as well, like you said, Danielle, they've now found their tribe and they can communicate together and, you know, get together. Same thing with nurses, same thing with doctors all over the place. Um, and it's, it's, it's absolutely empowering and that's really what it is is we're using their own methods against them yeah and, and i want to touch on here there's i don't know if you guys know of the ohio stands up landmark lawsuit that started off charge um they filed against the state of ohio challenging the declaration of emergency and now they've uh mirrored that and filed a similar case in new mexico They've also filed against uh, the federal government, the CDC, um, I think the HHS. HHS, HHS. Um, but one of the things the lawyer said, this, his name is Tom Renz, and one of his mentors was a Nuremberg uh, attorney. And he said that they could go and win their case, but most of the population will still be terrified and still walking around with masks. So he emphasized what you guys are all putting together that we, the population, we need to raise awareness that all of this stuff is going on, that there are lawsuits, that there are experts out there, that they're telling you there's a different story. So I want to talk about um, who's going to be involved in, uh, let's talk about who's going to be involved in your first event, uh, which is coming up. This is the first ever online Freedom for Truth conference on March 5th. It's going to be at um, 8 p.m. Eastern time, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific. Who who's coming on there? Can I can I touch on this one, ladies? Because yeah, I need a little reduction on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> okay, so we've got Judy Mikovits, and Judy has been amazing. She's been coming to or or doing some online stuff for us for the rallies that we've done here. Um, and Judy's been so great. So it just like kudos to this woman with her strong, powerful voice to out there and educate people. She's virologist, immunologist, like she's just PhD. Like this is, you don't, you're not gonna get better education than this. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Rocco Galati. And what I love about uh, what we're gonna be doing with the Freedom for Truth Conference is that after the conference, you're gonna have an opportunity to mingle with the speakers and to ask them questions. And uh, I think there's a lot of questions Canadians have for Rocco Galati. You know, I know we've got the, the lawsuit that's coming forward in BC. We've got the federal case. So if you want, you have questions, now is your opportunity to do so. And Dr. Carrie Madej, did I get it right this time? Yeah. <laughs> I introduced her on our last, on our last uh, live and I, and I kind of botched her name. Sorry, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I said, you guys need to tell me this. I was like to saying I've got food in my teeth and you didn't tell me. <laughs> so Carrie Madej, and she is just a powerhouse, beautiful woman inside and out and just knows her stuff. And you're learning from a doctor. Again, 
the, the doctors, when we had our last rally, the doctors, the nurses coming out, this gave us so much credibility. And, and so those that had been poo-pooing the rallies and thinking that we're just a bunch of hippie, hippie tree huggers out there, you know, burn the bra, that is not the case here. <laughs> we've got immense credibility. And so we've got three amazing speakers coming on with the opportunity to be able to ask them questions afterwards. It's, it's gonna be a pretty, a pretty amazing experience, I think, for everybody. So, so how is this? Yeah. <laughs> so how is this? How is this going to function? There's, are they going to give like a presentation, and then people are going to um, be able to ask questions, or, or how how will that work? Can you guys set up a, a an example of that? Take it away, Tanya. Oh. Yeah, I was going to okay. say, Alicia, you want to cover that? Oh, me? Who not? Or oh, it doesn't matter. Or Amanda? Oh, go ahead, have... Alicia. I... You got this. <laughs> <laughs> We've been running a couple simulations because we want to make sure that, you know, obviously there's no hiccups. Um, it is technology. So sometimes, you know, but we'll, we'll, you know, there's four of us that are going to be in the background on this managing. So what there will be is there's going to be a chat section, uh, which will be on the right side of the screen. So you'll be able to watch the presentation. And in the meantime, on the right side, uh, there will be a whole chat column and we will be posting polls there. And that is where everyone will be able to, um, you know, post their questions. And so what we are going to do is obviously answers to those questions um, will be, you know, discussed at the end when the presentation is done. Um, but the four of us, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be looking at all of the questions that are coming down the line through that time, um, making notes. And then obviously, I'm sure we're going to start seeing a very collective amount of the same kind of questions, the ones that are, uh, you know, what's happening, you know, with the lawsuits or, um, you know, anything. And I can't say the word, I say the word shot. Okay. COVID shot. Mm -hmm. I won't say the other word because you know what happens when you say it. Um, and, and so what we'll be doing is we will be, uh, taking those questions and we will be asking them and then whether it's, you know, Judy Mikovits or Dr. Carrie Madej, uh, they will be uh, answering those for those who are, are watching. And then we also will be, those polls are very, very important and we can't stress that enough um, that these polls are um, participated in. We are going to also take that same poll and we will have it on our website and we're gonna be leaving it up for, I think about 48 hours, maybe 72, uh, just so that you know we can give people the chance to participate in those as well before we close that out. And then we will carry on um, with, you know, our next conference, which will be a few weeks down the line. But we want to make it as interactive as possible. Um, and as we kind of get into the repetitiveness of these conferences, um, you know, we'll get all the logistics down, you know, better and better and better as, as time goes on. So as we grow, we're just asking everyone to be a little patient and just, you know, kind of grow with us. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And essentially what the platform is, is it's going to be similar to a rally, but it's a conference. However long they need to speak and cover the topic. And then like Alicia said, we just kind of open it up for questions after that. You know, so, some questions could go on for an hour where people, that's where we're really feeling fueled and getting those answers. Some of them might be already answered in the speeches and some of them might be answered afterwards, but to allow a good hour of speeches and a good hour of interaction so that mm -hmm. Um, afterwards, we're going to be posting the polls, but also on the freedomorg.ca, uh, the poll link will be there for 48 hours post uh, the conference, just so we can collect enough data for anyone who might have missed out on uh, on this opportunity. However, I do want to stress also that it's not just about answering the polls. Your participation in this conference is equally as important because we do have the analytics of the participant list to show that you are actually there. So they're both equally as important and you know we appreciate all of the participation and, and all of it. Oh, great. Yeah. And can I, sorry, can yeah. I just add something really quick? Um, a lot of the day I've been getting the question, you know Teams is, a Gates thing, right? <laughs> and yes, yeah. yes, we know if we could have avoided it, we absolutely 100% would have. But with this platform, it allows us to invite in 10,000 people, whereas the other platforms we researched were about 1,000. 
or it was like massive quantities of money for us to spend and we're really just not there. So we are going to use this. You're going to have to bear with us. Like Alicia said, we, we are learning it as well because we really didn't want to use that platform, but we are. And nothing because makes me happier than using that platform against him for this exact reason. So yes. it's okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's where we're at. We're just, you know, we're going to use the, their own mechanisms. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they've, uh, they've used, they've tried to use technology. They've tried to use media. Um, there's, you know, so yeah. it's our, it's our turn now. It's yeah, our it's turn. It's not working but, for but them for anymore. The, yeah, but for the right cause, for the right cause, because we care about people, we love people, we want to protect people. And you know what, this is also for our kids, we're all mothers. And we all have children, and we want them to have a future. We want everybody's kids to have a future, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. and be willing to make choices in their own life that they chose, not the one their government is choosing for them. Yeah. So, you know, and, and another thing that's good with the teams, and I'm just going to put this out there because I know there's people that's, that are concerned with certain logistics. It allows for the, I always screw this word up, sorry, ladies, an, anon, anonymity. Yes. <laughs> Everybody has their word and that's mine. Sorry. Okay. Yep. So you can put the screen on black. You can change the name across the bottom. Mm -hmm. it, it'll protect you from you know firing doxing wakefielding we'll even mm -hmm. throw that word in there because um those in the health freedom movement know what that means mm -hmm. um so there's just that added level of you know it takes the anxiety out of it yeah something i wanted to add to that too amanda that we were mentioning is it would be great that if somebody wasn't comfortable to put in what their real name was is to put in like nurse Nancy or firefighter mm -hmm. Fred it'd be great to be able to see you know uh, on that logistics level who you know what what sector are you coming from you know you can be able to see everybody who's on there but if you had that identification to let people know oh my gosh like look at all the military that we have in here look at all the MLAs that are in here look at all the people that are really interested to hear what we have to say um, you know, just to have that little extra information, I think it'll be a, an eye opener to see how many people would have actually stepped into a rally if they could have. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect addition to any. Thanks for adding that. Absolutely. If, if you're scared to show your name, include your, your title there, teacher, doctor, or nurse, because if we can collect that and know that it's, it's perfect. Your, your number counts. It doesn't have to be your name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what, one of the things I want to ask you about as well is um, with empowering people, what, what are some kind of specifics that they're going to get? What kind of knowledge will they be able to use um, immediately? I know we've got the constitutional lawyer. There's, there's the science stuff, which is it's going to change people's minds. But, um, but what's something that, they, that some of the things they can take away from this that they can start employing in their day-to-day -day lives right now? Well, I would think that the first thing that they're going to be able to do is, like you said, they have a constitutional lawyer there that's going to be able to let them know these are the sections that are trumping your charter of rights or even, you know, that that you can go in maskless. They Even if they try to mandate a vaccine or whatever it is, you've got your rights because that's obviously the biggest thing that people are concerned about. Well, what's going to happen with the vaccine? Um, and then someone like Judy Mikovits, who's going to, you know, explain the history behind it, because she's been a, a longtime person around this, especially with the whole Dr. Fauci thing, because people tend to praise him because of, you know, US, WHO and things like that. And then you've got Carrie Midday, who's got such deep knowledge of the mRNA and what that means to us being someone who was invited into a meeting that talked about what they intend on doing, you know, for the future of people and, and collecting their data and stuff like that. So with those three alone, and then, you know, empowering yourself with knowledge on your rights, empowering yourself with knowledge of facts, um, and then empowering yourself, finding like-minded people within your areas through the chat, they're definitely going to leave feeling empowered. And then now feeling like this is just the first step. If not, hopefully they took many steps by then, but even if it's your very first step, it's your first step to creating the biggest movement right now to end the tyranny. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I've, I've got a final question I want to ask you guys but before I do that I'm going to show um, your website and then some other sources for people and I also want to emphasize one of the things I'm I'm trying to raise awareness of is this is happening all over the world 
So the things that we're putting together, this is, is really gathering evidence and creating new media um, to inform people. And we're, we're creating the alternatives. Um, so I wanna show some other things that have been happening that who knows, maybe in future, the Freedom Organization, all of their work can help in some of these other things. And, and the other things that are going on, they may end up reaching out to you guys too. So let me just share my screen here and we'll look at your website first so that people can access this. Here we go. So this is, you'll find it at thefreedomorg.ca and everything I'm gonna share now, I'm gonna put the links in the video description. Um, go to this website, you can join here, help, help their cause and donate here. Um, they provide their email as well and join the call, there's information. Uh, so that's the first place to go to thefreedomorg.ca. And then Amanda Forbes has a great uh, YouTube channel. You can just look up Amanda Forbes. Um, she's also talked about the Freedom Organization. She's spoken to the Global Frontline Nurses and has a lot of other great interviews that you can explore. So she's talked to some really wonderful people and you can inform yourself that way. And Tanya as well, um, she's got her information. Uh, she's got great interviews there. There's with uh, Dr. Carrie Midday, uh, Denis Rancor, and I believe she's, yeah, Rocco Galati as well. And this is on uh, BitChute. And I'm going to ask Tanya, if she's got another one as well. I think she's on Instagram and Facebook. I am on YouTube as well, actually. Okay. On YouTube but the as well. David Icke video was removed and I was censored there, but I am on YouTube and Okay. Instagram, Twitter, all of that. All of it is under Tanya the Herbalist. Awesome. Instagram, Twitter, and you're on Telegram too. And I know there, right. I'm going to put all the links in there guys. So, so everybody watching, you'll be able to connect wherever you feel best um, connecting. So here's a couple of other things um, that you might want to check out the children's health defense and their defender they did on February 11th, they uploaded um, the COVID vaccine on trial. And I think you can watch that. So it's the video should be there and you'll be able to look at experts talking about if they're safe and effective. Can you be forced to take one? Who's liable? How do I protect my right to choose? There's Robert F. Kennedy, Del Bigtree, Tom Cowan, Mary Holland, and others. Another thing to check out Stand for Health Freedom in the US, they've also started a movement here in Canada. You can see up at the top right hand corner. And you can share this with friends and family who are still skeptical. This was an event that they hosted um, calling for an investigation into the CDC's conduct, showing the data that the CDC committed fraud. Um, you've got uh, medical experts, um, you have experts on the PCR, you have some uh, political figures as well. You have a superintendent for a school who talked about his experience. And here in the Constitutional Rights Center, um, you could go and find them on YouTube. And they actually hosted a roundtable um, fundraising event uh, earlier in January. And you can look at, there's a section where it was focused on law you had Randy Hillier there. You had um, some lawyers involved. They had medical experts like Sherry Tenpenny. Um, they had education people. Amanda was part of that. Uh, and they also had a spiritual aspect and media as well, which is so important right now. And our next one here, um, I'm just going to, I'll sum up. I put on my website um, some of the international things so you can quickly go there. Um, Reiner Fulmich and the German Corona Investigative Committee, you can go to their official website and watch hours of um, recorded hearings. And there's also the International Tribunal for Natural Justice that's been gathering evidence. You've had Sherry Tenpenny, Del Bigtree and others giving uh, evidence for that. We've got the PCR fraud with Reiner Fulmich, including the cease and desist papers that were served. Um, all of this stuff, there, there's a whole bunch. So you can link up there and that's a quick, quick place to go. Um, there's also this video I'm gonna put in here. This is whistleblower footage um, that Reiner Fulmich's uh, hearing included for what was going on in nursing homes. 
I'd ask people to also check out. Um, this is Oracle Films on Brand YouTube that's been uh, giving a platform to experts talking about uh, things you'll want to know about, including people who are working with the World Freedom Alliance and the World Doctors Alliance. So they are there as well. I mean, this I could go on and on, but I'm not going to show you everything. There's Medical Freedom International. Please watch this video. They don't focus on any conspiracy theories. They're just telling you what's required for informed consent and ethical medical care that's not being taken care of right now. And of course, our global frontline nurses um, who Amanda has interviewed. And uh, we've got our Canadian frontline nurses who are connected with them and we can help uh, con network with them and support them as well. So, you know, we're part of a big movement and I'm, I'm, uh, I think what you guys are doing is going to be incredible. Um, what I can see from this is you're, we're going to have so much evidence put together from the experts coming on, as well as the polls that you guys are taking, the participation analytics, um, and people are going to start connecting with each other and reaching out to you guys as well. I think um, that's going to be amazing. So I've got our final question, uh, unless you want to say something, Danielle. I just have a, one website. I would really love it if you yeah. could add, and it's it's one that's more for BC, and mm -hmm. it is uh, actionforcanada.com mm -hmm. with the letter with the number four. So yes. actionforcanada.com, and that's the one that Alicia and I have been doing a lot of the fundraising for uh, mm -hmm. with the lawsuit against the BC government working with Rafa okay. Galati. So um, all of our rally fundraisers have been going um, right to Tanya Ga, uh, who is the lead plaintiff in the case. So that's where, that's where our heart is at here in BC. All right. Awesome. It'll be on there. We'll have the links for everybody to go check out. <laughs> so um, before we finish, here's the, my final question for everybody. And we could start with uh, Tanya. Um, what do you see for the future of Canadians? Uh, well, I've been saying it all along that this is the year of the uprising. And I absolutely believe it because it's always darkest before dawn and people, you know, right when they feel like it's just getting worse and worse, the media makes it seem that way, but none of their agenda from vaccines to vaccine passports and all of that is going to be sustainable. Um, so right when they feel like they're almost going to win is I think when it's going to start to crumble, especially with, I always say, once you're awake, you don't go back to sleep. So the awakening is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it, I, I do believe that it's going to be the year of the uprising where people are going to recognize their power and take it back. Yeah. All right. Amanda, how about you? Um, well, similar to Tanya, there's always chaos before the calm. And I think 2021 is going to be a year of chaos. But out of that, we're going to create something incredible. And the main goal is to bring everyone together, right? And, and just focus on humanity, not the specifics of um, ethnicity or, or anything in that regard. They've divided us for too long. And this is how they, they get in and, and they play with people's minds. We have to put that aside. We have to forget our differences we have to come together find one common ground and you can build on that from there you know and the art of that is gone and there is a reason it is gone it is an intentional removal from civilization so you bring that back and you remember your humanity and we're going to create magic together and we're going to take our country back we're going to take the world back from all of these corrupt and tyrannical people that think they're better than us mm -hmm. in the wrong places you know and we're going to solidify this freedom and the end of it we will we're going to change it and we're going to hang on to it and we're going to make sure this never ever ever happens again absolutely <laughs> i yeah you know and i listen to you ladies speak and i just my head is nodding constantly and i just what we're doing here is so huge and whoever thought that any of us would be here at this point in time a year ago when somebody said I could see you running these rallies and I'm like the hell no you know and here we are and now my with my son being in school and and dealing with a lot of the harassment that he's dealing with in school 
Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of the big things is I would like to see the constitution taught in schools and working with Rocco, this is one of the things I really would like to push for so that people can learn when they're violating and when they're being violated. Mm -hmm. That's the first part for me. Um, and as I think Tanya mentioned earlier, you know, we're being attacked from all angles. You know, we're being attacked through the media, we're being attacked through the medical industry, we're being attacked through the schools. And, and when I say attacked, it doesn't always come off as, a, as an attack, although you know you get the people who are who are the attackers within and policing people. But when we tear away the foundations of these systems, we've got to build them right back up from start. Media has got to look different. You know, it is, it is civil journalists that are the ones that are reporting the news. It's people like us that are connecting with people all across the country. We've started a telegram group that is connected all the leaders across the country. So we know firsthand what's happening in, in, each, in each province. So that's news. Who are boots on the ground right now? Who's finding out the information and sharing the information? When we're uniting with the global frontline, frontline nurses and they're coming to our rallies and, and telling us exactly what's happening in their industry where the elderly are dying because of yeah. failure to thrive, because they don't have visitors, because they're being quarantined, that's an issue. And the, and the solution cannot be worse than the problem. Mm -hmm. So, and when we've got, uh, you know, Sarah, who is, or Sarah is working with the long-term care, but um, Kristen, who is working with, uh, she's a neonatal nurse, and she said, you know, here we are teaching mothers that they're dirty before breastfeeding their children, that they've got to wipe down their breast before they feed their child, and that the first recognition of their mother's face is with a mask on when they're in delivery. This is wrong on so many levels. And so the whole teaching system, like we were talking about with the Rockefellers, being an integrated into, into these systems, the foundation of these programs has got to be built back up from scratch. We need to know that food and that sunshine, getting the vitamin D, you know, we had little Macy, six years old, who spoke at our last rally, educating people. If somebody, if like, somebody like this was writing the policies for, for hospitals, you know, we would be, the world would be a better place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, why is it that we're having to learn from a six-year-old that, you know, we should be eating our vegetables and our fruits mm -hmm. and that we should be getting outside and getting fresh air and vitamin D and, you know, that the adults can't make the common sense of us, you know, taking our own health back. This is the Nuremberg code. We're able to opt out of any experiment that we don't want to be part of. And this is all one great big giant experiment you're being experimented with the, with the shot. You're being experimented with the mask. We don't know, I was listening to Fauci this morning. We don't really know whether or not quarantines work. I played at the last rally where Bonnie Henry, who also swore under oath uh, you know, with the nurses um, that, that masks don't work. And I said, does anybody hear this? You know, did anybody hear about this? And they were like, yeah, yeah. I said, well, let me just play it for you to remind you. Because Bonnie Henry said that masks don't work Furthermore, she did it under oath. And now yet here we are all being mandated masks in stores, in the schools with our kids that are asymptomatic, treating people that are not sick and teaching them to be hypochondriacs. It removes their humanity. People. We're teaching people like this. When you used to think that there was something wrong with you, when there was nothing wrong with you, the doctor would send you home and write down hypochondriac in your file. You know, and now everybody is concerned and we're not using our critical thinking to be able to get us out of this stuff. Somewhere in your soul, you've got to know something doesn't feel right. Somewhere in your soul, you've got to know that there's that innate power with you that knows what needs to be done in order to protect your own health. So we've got to get back to that foundation with the media, with the medical industry and with our schools. And when we can start to rebuild those foundations, I think we're gonna be in a lot better place. But the first part of it is knowledge. And so when we get that knowledge, the knowledge is power, and then we can start to build from there. Yeah, so I agree with, I, I agree with all of these ladies. Um, I think when we, when we strip everything away and we, help people remember that we are all sovereign souls. And that is the only thing that, it doesn't matter what race, what religion, what creed, 
we have the same blood that runs in our veins. And we have to help people remember who they are and that we're, we're one. And I think that everything that's bad has to crumble before we can build again. And that's what we're doing. And it's, it's happening around the world. That's what we're watching. So as stressful as this is, and there's times I'm sure we've all had moments where we've cried. I know I've had a couple of you know breakdowns myself because it hurts me to see the atrocity that is being done to humanity. But this is the only way to wake people up. And there are going to be people like all of us who stand up and we speak out and you know, we help them all remember where they come from. And when we all get to that place of re remembrance, we are gonna create the most beautiful earth. And I know that. And, and that's why we're all here together right now. Yeah. yeah it's not getting worse, it's just being revealed. Yeah. 100%, mm -hmm. amen. Yeah, I think um, I was actually talking about this today uh, to end off is one of the things that a lot of people who just start to see this, they get very, you know, shocked and, and very angry. And they think that this is like, you know, this is something out of the blue. How could this happen? And when you dig into this, which I'm sure you guys all have looked into this, this has been going on for a very, very long time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I think it's fortunate that at least I've been able to see it and can do something about it. And I think there, there's a lot that we can do. I'm, I'm happy to have found you guys and what you're all doing because a lot of people too, they get overwhelmed with this information and they feel powerless, um, but there's so much that you can do. And, and the first thing is to use your voice. Use your voice, show up, be be a participant and even if you're nervous at first you can be anonymous you know you'll you'll start to connect and you'll see that it's you're not alone out there so yeah absolutely yeah. well they say when you when you see evil expose it mm -hmm. dark cannot stay dark when there's light mm -hmm. and we're all just shedding light on the darkness yeah yeah, well, I want to thank you all for participating in this interview, and I really um, hope that your freedom conferences go well. Again, I'm going to let everybody know um, it's thefreedomorg.ca. Uh, the link will be posted with the video, and their first conference is going to be March 5th um, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific. So I hope you can join everybody and help these wonderful women uh, create our foundation of freedom of unified freedom and diversity hey <laughs> thank you thank you Amy, for everything thank you yes, for thanks. allowing us to have this platform to speak and to share our information very grateful for you as well thank you <laughs> thank you amy thank you ladies thanks so amy so much love you guys love you guys love you too bye bye, bye.